When it comes to reading body language, the face is actually the primary source of information that we receive. And so therefore today we're going to explore the question, how do you read body language and facial expressions? Today we're going to explore five different ways that we can get insights into a person's body language just from the facial expressions uh, that they are displaying in the moment. I promise you that if you watch all five, you'll never look at another person's face in the same way. The first area of focus is to realize that the face gives us a gateway into exploring a person's emotions. It used to be thought that all facial expressions were culturally based, meaning that it was impossible to read a person's emotions just from the signs that were showing up in their face. However, through the work of Dr. Paul Ekman, who you may know from the series Lie to Me or the movie Inside Out, we discovered that actually there are some universalities when it comes to facial expressions. Specifically, there are seven universal facial expressions for emotions. Those seven universal emotions are surprise and fear, anger, disgust, contempt, happiness, and sadness. So when a person shows us these emotions, we can be clear that it is this emotion that they are feeling in the moment. This can truly help us assess what's happening with a person as we're in conversation with them or if they're going through a certain experience. Now, facial expressions can be one of two types. The first type is macro expressions. And what a macro expression is the fullness of an emotion being displayed to you. So say, for example, if you're in conversation with someone and you're angry at that person, and you want that person to know that you are angry, you will display anger towards that person. Now, this expression of emotion called a macro expression will normally last anywhere from half a second to four seconds. We know, for example, that surprise is the quickest emotion and that sadness is the longest emotion. That's not surprising. There's a pun. Because when it comes to sadness, of course, it's a fact is lengthy and it can continue with us. Now we have macro expressions, but then we also have micro expressions. And this is the second area that can give us some amazing information when it comes to facial expression. What a micro expression is, is a brief expression of an emotion, normally lasting half a second or less, that a person is consciously trying to hide or unconsciously repressing. And if we are trained, we can pick up on this emotion. There's a wonderful training tool that Dr. Paul Ekman offers, which is the micro expressions training tool. And I'm going to put a link on that below where you can train to read some of these micro expressions. Now, what's the benefit of being able to pick up both these emotions, micro expressions and micro expressions? It's that you're developing a new muscle and a new set of data reading that when you're in conversation with a person, you're picking up the emotions that they're experiencing in the moment. And with that data, you're able to ask different questions that will help you have a deeper conversation or really get to the point that you're trying to make. The third area is that the face expresses signs that we are actively thinking. We call this cognitive load. And we have to be careful here because sometimes we can confuse cognitive load with the sign of an expression. So for example, when you're thinking, sometimes our eyebrows will go down as if in focused concentration. And so you'll find they go down like this as a person thinks about what's happening. And these are all signs that the person is actively in a thinking process, which gives us an idea of where they're at. Maybe we've suggested something to them and they're considering it. And therefore this cognitive load display is helping us understand that the person is actively considering what we have just said. Another sign of cognitive load perhaps is the pursing of the lips or maybe even the biting of a lip. 
This can be a sign as well that the person is in that thought process of actively considering something. If you're enjoying this video, I invite you to click on the subscribe below to press the bell and you will be reminded when a new video is released. Every week I produce a video around the area of emotional intelligence, helping people become better readers of both themselves and as other people and help you show up with more confidence at work and at home. The fourth area of the face is eye contact. We know that when a person makes eye contact with another person, it is a sign of engagement. In fact, that's scientifically backed up by the reality that whenever we engage in our eyes, a hormone is excreted, which is called oxytocin, which is the hormone that actually makes us feel connected with other people. So pay attention to a person's eye contact. Are they looking at you and how much are they looking at you? We know in the Western world that about 60% of the time we're making eye contact with another person. And that's the normal rate. Anything lower, then we begin to think, is this person disengaged from me? Are they trying to hide something? Or if it's higher, it can really feel a little bit creepy in that the person is constantly looking at us. So we want that balance of about 60%, which actually happens quite naturally whenever we engaged with someone in conversation. And the final area is to be on the lookout for facial illustrators and facial manipulators. Now, what do we mean by those two terms? Well, when we're having a conversation, an illustrator is a sign of body language that helps improve the conversation. So I just did an illustrator there. I was talking about when we're in conversation, an illustrator helps the conversation move. And naturally I started doing this with my hands. That's an illustrator because it illustrates what I am trying to say. Well, we also have illustrators on our face. And so whenever we're in conversation, one of the most common illustrators is actually what we do with our eyebrows. And so as we speak, our eyebrows will move up and down and it's almost in rhythm with our speech pattern. It helps the conversation flow. So just be aware of a person's facial illustrators, how they use their eyebrows, for example, as they speak. A manipulator is a sign of body language when one part of the body touches another. So say, for example, if we scratch our ear, if we rub the back of our neck is a manipulator in the body. But we also have facial manipulators. And a facial manipulator could be when perhaps we bite our lip or when we uh, blow air in the side of our cheek like this. All of those are a sign as well of manipulators and can be an indicator of increased stress, especially if it is a change from the baseline that we have. The face can be such an important gift when it comes to reading the body language of others. And hopefully today, one of these five areas has piqued your interest. As always, when it comes to body language, the advice I give is to be curious to be observant, to begin to look at other people's faces and just notice what you are seeing. So often we miss all of these facial expressions and signs and they are so rich with data. If you've enjoyed this video, I invite you to look at the next video, which is what are the most important gestures in communication?